So we just arrived here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, and I'm really excited to work at this workshop called uh, Living Art City, and we're about to work with these five artists from Cambodia that focus on urban landscape, and I'm really excited to see what uh, the connection will be between art, Cambodia, and how I can use it within the urban design field. Hi, my name is Lim Sakyan Lina. I am uh, an artist working on a project called Rap Futures. And um, that series, uh, I've, I was looking around and do a series on a fence around the cities of Phnom Penh. The main goal of I'm working on this fence and giving the awareness to uh, people to understand how urban, urban uh, have changed in Phnom Penh cities and how globalization has come in Phnom Penh city. Behind this is was the home. It's somehow a slum that uh, a lot of people are living here, like uh, like thousands of families or something like like a thousand of families. And uh, then the government start to like have a partner with the investors, and they want this kind this land. Yes, they get, like they bring the, the big grant, no? The, the what? The, the the big truck, and I just it's the house. To see the house, kick the piece, the people house, put a new, a very nice fan there. I know. That's it's funny, amazing. right? You never know. I mean, that's what's so strong about this. What's going on behind this? And I, I, I really, really want my students to work with you during this opportunity because you're capturing this transition from this kind of utopia really to a new kind of city. And you're, you're revealing something to the world about globalization and your like that because it's such trial and error because it is unplanned. So we are now standing on the rice field where the bomb pond was filled up for the rice fields for the plantations and we are in Kandar province. We are here to visit the bomb pond that was shot by Wandi Ratana, who is an artist researching some bomb pond so far. Come. It's clear to me that really formulating an, a very unique and customized understanding of every specific space is so important to coming up with a very well-rounded intervention, right? So maybe this bomb pond experience is more about learning how to be sensitive of some of the cultural realities that they have here. And so if it's about a relationship with something like a bomb pond that can be both very emotionally sensitive because of the history that is behind it, but then we see that they're actually really interestingly enough using it for some sort of productive reason, that example kind of informs the way of life or the culture here in Phnom Penh. Artists in Cambodia concerned with the city reflecting on urban change are not proposing solutions. They're proposing reflections. They're saying that my memory is changing, my city is changing, and it's it's an ambivalence because it's happening to their life. Um, but it matters and they must do it. They all say, I just must do this. But I think urban planners and urban designers, especially coming from a, a, a different perspective, from a distance, they're, um, they think practically. And it's not their memories. And so this, this dialogue together can um, perhaps make something, um, make, make proposals for solutions. We work with five voices, five practices from the city that are, um, sound like they do or make like they do because of what is going on in the city at this time, right? So it's about the individual and their practice, but it's also about the city. And the city is constant, cities are all constantly changing. And so, as so urban designers, our work is not always about like, fixing a problem we see right in front of us, but designing a system that, as these voices change, they can continue to be heard. 
Yeah, I'm not thinking. 